we're fortunate in that this modern age, we can take our spirituality from a broad spectrum of sources down through time to the present age. We can learn from those that came before us. Often we can learn what not to do as well as what to do, which is sometimes even more important. Most major religions share similar and common beliefs and tools among them. These come down to us through the centuries. I'm going to briefly skim over the timeline and then talk about some of the individual specific tools, the symbolism and uses of each one. The studies of human past, known as the Three Age System, was coined by Christian J. Thompson, who came up with the framework. The basis of this framework is technological. It revolves around the notion of three successive periods or ages, the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age, each age being technologically more complex than the one before it. During this time, every civilization on Earth had begun their own belief systems, their own myths, and their own oral traditions. This is evidenced by their burial practices and those items found in and near them, as well as the remains of cities long wiped off the Earth to forever memory, being modernly brought back by archaeologists as newly uncovered, discovered, and or deciphered by our modern scientists, such as Ur and Petra. Each city a lecture to itself as well. The Stone Age begins with the first production of stone implements and ends with the first use of bronze. Since the chronological limits of the Stone Age are based on technological development rather than actual date ranges, its length varies in different areas of the world. The earliest global date for the beginning of the Stone Age is about 2.5 million years ago in Africa, and the earliest end date is about 3300 before Common Era, which is the beginning of the Bronze Age in the Near East. Tools and weapons during the Stone Age were not made exclusively of stone. Organic materials such as antler bone, fiber, leather, and wood were also employed. There is evidence suggesting that the 2.5 million year limit for stone tool manufacture might be pushed a bit further back. Because of the capacity of tool use, and even its manufacture is not exclusive of our species, there are studies indicating that bonobos are capable of flaking and using stone and sticks for tools in order to gain access to food in an experimental setting. They can learn and teach their groups, and other groups can learn from watching them. Nevertheless, there are differences between the tools produced by modern apes and those produced by the early toolmakers, who had better biomechanical and cognitive skills and produced more efficient tools. Because agriculture developed at different times in different regions of the world, there is no single date for the end of the Mesolithic period, even within a specific region. Agriculture developed during different times. For example, agriculture first developed in Southeast Europe about 7000 BCE, in Central Europe about 5500 BCE, and in Northern Europe about 4000 BCE. All these factors make chronological limits of the Mesolithic somehow fuzzy. Moreover, some regions do not have a Mesolithic period at all. An example is the Near East, where agriculture was developed around 9000 BCE, right after the end of the Ice Age. During the Mesolithic period, important large-scale changes took place on our planet. As the climate was getting warmer and the ice sheets were melting, some areas in the northern latitudes rose, as they were being freed from the weight of the ice. At the same time, the sea levels rose, drowning low-lying areas, resulting in major changes in the land worldwide. The Japanese islands were separated from the mainland, Tasmania from Australia, the British Isles from continental Europe, East Asia, and North America became divided by the flooding of the Bering Strait. The shape of the continents and islands was very much those of the present day around 5000 BCE. Agriculture brought major changes in the way human society is organized and how it uses the earth including forest clearance, root crops, and cereal cultivation that can be stored for long periods of time, along with the development of new technologies for farming and herding, such as plows, irrigation systems, etc. More intense agriculture implies more food available for more people, more villages, and a movement towards more complex social, religious, and political organization. They gradually evolve into towns and finally into cities. Towards the end of the Neolithic era, copper metallurgy is introduced, which marks the transition period to the Bronze Age. Clay is another material which is abundant in the bulk of Stone Age material remains. Clay can be fashioned into a desired shape and baked to fix its form. This is the birth of pottery. 
Usable clay is widely available, which explains why pottery was independently invented in many parts of the world at different times. The oldest evidence of pottery, pottery manufacture has been found in an archaeological site in Japan, where fragments from a specific vessel have been dated to 16,500 before present, usually associated with radiocarbon dating. Non-agricultural peoples of Japan were producing clay pots that were elaborately decorated by about 1300 before present, which were used for food preparation. During the early Neolithic era, around 8000 BCE, special ovens used to part cereal grains and to bake bread were being built in the Near East, which allowed people to control fire and produce high temperatures in enclosed facilities. Initially, pottery was made in open fires, but the use of ovens added new possibilities to the development of pottery. Around the same time, some areas of South America were also developing pottery technology. With the introduction of bronze metallurgy, the Stone Age came to an end. Bronze is a mixture of copper and tin, which has greater hardness than copper, better casting properties, and a lower melting point. Bronze could be used for making weapons, something that was not possible with copper, which is not hard enough to endure combat conditions. In time, bronze became the primary material for tools and weapons, and a good part of the stone technology became obsolete, signaling an end to the Stone Age. While the Iron Age religions of the Mediterranean Near East, India, and China are well attested in written sources, much of the Iron Age Europe, from the period of about 700 BCE down to the Great Migrations, falls within the prehistoric period. There are scarce amounts of non-Mediterranean religious customs in the records of Hellenistic and Roman era ethnography, being the scientific description of customs of individuals, peoples, and cultures. We have evidence of Scythian mythology, Heroditus, Celtic polytheism, Posidonius, Paleo-Balkan mythology, Germanic polytheism, Tacitus, Slavonic polytheism, Procopius, mythology of the Turkic and Mongolian peoples. In the case of circumpolar religion, shamanism in Siberia, Finnic mythology, traditional African religions, Native American religions, and Pacific religions, the prehistoric era mostly ends only with the early modern periods and European colonialism. These traditions were often only first recorded in the context of Christianization. For these reasons, the interpretations and understanding of the Iron Age beliefs in Europe have to rely primarily on archaeological finds and dated material. For example, Stonehenge is a prehistoric monument in Wiltshire, England, two miles west of Amesbury. It consists of a ring of standing stones, with each standing stone around 13 feet high, 7 feet wide, and weighing around 25 tons. These stones are set within earthworks in the middle of the most dense complex of Neolithic monuments in England. Archaeologists believe it was constructed from 3000 to 2000 BC. The surrounding circular earth bank and ditch, which constitute the earliest phase of the monument, have been dated to about 3100 BC. Radiocarbon dating suggests that the first blue stones were raised between 2400 and 2200 BC, although they may have been at the site as early as 3000 BC. Another example, the Egyptian pyramids. The ancient pyramid-shaped masonry structures located in Egypt. As of November 2008, sources cite either 118 or 138 as the number of identified Egyptian pyramids. The earliest known Egyptian pyramids are found at Saqqara, northwest of Memphis. The earliest among these is the Pyramid of Dozer, which was built around 2630 to 2610 BC during the Third Dynasty. This pyramid and its surrounding complex were designed by the architect Emotive and are generally considered to be the world's oldest monumental structures constructed of dressed masonry. Anthropology, Cicero 1940, assumed that religion is in complete continuity with magical thinking and that it is a cultural product. The complete continuity between magic and religion has been a postulate of modern anthropology at least since the 1930s. The perspective of modern anthropology towards religion is the projection idea, a methodological approach which assumes that every religion is created by the human community that worships it, that the creative active ascribed to God is projected from man. In 1841, Ludwig Feuerbach was the first to employ this concept as the basis for systematic critique of religion. A prominent persecutor in the formulation of this projection 
principle was Glambesta Vico, an early formulation of its foundation in an ancient Greek writer, Xenophanes, which observed that the gods of the Ethiopians were inevitably black with flat noses, while those of the Thracians were blonde with blue eyes. One major problem in the anthropology of religion is the definition of religion itself. Anthropologists believed that certain religious practices and beliefs were more or less universal to all cultures at some point in their development, such as a belief in spirits or ghosts, the use of magic as means of controlling the supernatural, the use of divination as means of discovering occult knowledge of the future, the performance of rituals such as prayer and sacrifice as means of influencing the outcome of various events through a supernatural agency, sometimes taking the form of shamanism or ancestor worship. According to Clifford Gertz, religion is a system of symbols which acts to establish powerful, pervasive, and long-lasting moods and motivations in men by formulating conceptions of general order of existence and clothing these conceptions with such an aura of factuality that the moods and motivations seem uniquely realistic. Today, religious anthropologists debate and reject the cross-cultural validity of these categories, often viewing them as examples of European primitivism. Anthropologists have considered various criteria for defining religion, such as a belief in the super supernatural or the reliance on ritual, but few claim that these criteria are universally valid. Anthony F. C. Wallace proposes four categories of religion, each subsequent category subsuming the previous. These are, however, synthetic categories and do not necessarily encompass all religions. The individualistic is the most basic, the most simplest. An example is the vision quest. The shamanistic, part-time religious practitioner uses religion to heal, to divine, usually on behalf of a client. The Tillamook, a Native American tribe from coastal Oregon, have four categories of shamanism. Spiritualists, faith healers, palm readers, religious authorities, acquired through one's own means. The third category Wallace proposes is communal an elaborate set of beliefs and practices, groups of people arranged in clans by lineage, age group, or some religious societies. People take on roles based on knowledge and ancestral worship. The fourth and final is the ecclesiastical. Dominant agricultural societies and states typically depreciate competing individualistic and shamanistic cults. The 19th century saw a dramatic increase in knowledge about a wide variety of cultures and religions, and also the establishment of economic and social histories of progress. The History of Religion School sought to account for this religious diversity by connecting it with social and economic situation of a particular group. Typically, religions were divided into stages of progression from simple to complex societies, especially from polytheistic relating to or characterized by belief in or worship of more than one god, to monotheistic relating to or characterized by the belief that there is only one god, and from extempore, spoken or done without preparation, to organized. One can also classify religions as circumcising and non-circumcising, proselytizing, attempting to convert people of other religions, and non-proselytizing. Many religions share common beliefs. This is known in alternative traditions. The god or gods of the old religion become the devil or devils of the new. Each society believing in their own myths or traditions until the modern Christian era, which has some religions of the most popular societies and those not as widely practiced in separate classes. Writing plays a key role in the systematic theology that we are building upon and something that should be studied in an entire course rather than one part of a lecture. Along with the history of languages, myths, and stories handed down from generations before them, the earliest scribes recorded anything and everything that was in their world and in their belief system. We can study them individually and the beliefs they held in the future, but for now we can move on to the tools that many practitioners of common traditions and the ancient paths used to practice their arts and religion.